itong si Rafi Tulfo, ano? Dito sa Wanted sa Radio, full episode, October 3, 2023. Kanina lang, mga kapatas natin, eh, nagsabi siya, nagbitaw siya ng mga salita patungkol sa akin. Binanggit siya dito, mga kapatas natin, na salita na tataob ako sa sabog at padadalhan niya daw ako ng bulaklak, mga kapatas natin. Is that a threat? Eventually, tumawag sa akin si Nari Kul. Tumawag yung mga, mga kamag-anak ko, kaibigan, message. Maraming nag-message doon sa ano. Maraming nag-message na na nag-threat nga sa buhay ko itong si Rafi Tulfo. I beg your pardon? Uh, nag-threat nga sa buhay ko itong si Rafi Tulfo. Are you threatened? I'd be very much interested to learn and understand why you appeared hesitant and doubtful before you can finally drop the bomb. You were known for your frankness and straightforwardness. However, you seem to stutter and took a long pause that you have to get your momentum and composure first as if gearing up to prepare to accelerate. Perhaps, it's more like working up on the logical progression of a story as you go. While your hand began scratching your forehead, your eyes darted around. You pretty much look like very unsure where to look at, hence the excessively inconsistent shiftings. These unusual facial expressions and gestures left me confused. Again, please take note that I had to go through these details, primarily because this is how the camp of Mr. Libayan play their game. They're so fond of making a big deal out of such mannerism, gestures, and the like. But contrary to their habit who always claim to be practicing critical thinking skills, I don't just give opinion solely based on my own assumptions, but I make sure to back it up. Hmm. Seriously, that actually bothers me. So I tried to find answers as to the sudden change of your behavior. As global body language and persuasion expert based in Boulder, Colorado, Tracy Brown, said body can't lie. Giving emphasis on the importance and advantages of learning about other people's body language. In this article from Meeting and Conventions, they enumerated the signs in the determination whether or not the person talking is lying by decoding the body gestures and or movement under normal circumstances. So, any sudden differences in his baseline that you see might be considered as a sign. Maraming nag-message na na nag-threat nga sa buhay ko itong si Rafi Tulfo. Speaking of which, an article from CNBC showcasing the signs to tell if someone's lying according to a behavioral scientist and body language expert. As discussed earlier, it's very important to establish and take note of the usual facial and body movements, the eyes, the tone of the voice, etc. under normal circumstances. So, any sudden differences in his baseline that you see might be considered as a sign. Maraming nag nag-message na na nag-threat nga sa buhay ko itong si Rafi Tulfo. All right, let's proceed. Here's another take from the point of view of a communication pathologist and cognitive neuroscientist, published by Well and Good.com. Similarly, in the given references, this too expounds on the useful and helpful signs in the determination whether or not the other party's telling the truth by means of analyzing the mixture of the body movement. Considerably, nonverbal communication has a much greater impact and reliability than spoken words, as we applied to decipher Rennie Randolph's body language before dropping the bomb. Now, given these few of the many references, can we safely tell if Mr. Libayan's insane claim, emphasizing that Senator Rafi Tulfo uttered a death threat towards him, is true or not? Was there ever a death threat to begin with? Or did he just made it all up, probably to cover up something? Oopsies! Oh wait, did he just stutter? Oh hell yes! Cognitive neuroscientist, in an article said, that speech pattern can be used as an indicator of someone's lying. We've already seen that symptoms of stress and signs of lying go hand in hand. Sudden changes in body language in general. From the movement of the eyes, unusual facial expressions, the lips, the hands, the long pause, indicates that the person may be nervous about what he's about to say, and what he's saying isn't true. Consequently, the rapid speech resulted to stuttering can also be considered as a sign. As a human, our body processes untruthful stuffs in a completely different way than it does the truth. Our body is almost instinctive in its response. That's because it doesn't have to work as hard as it does when one is telling a lie and the bigger the lie, the harder it is to pull off. Hence, the need to be familiar and establish the so-called baselines with some of the physiological signs as previously discussed. However, please note that we are not using these articles to throw shade at them, just trying to make sense of their actions without solely relying to our own beliefs. I had to enable myself to listen, learn, and empathize. Oops, did I just see somebody raised a brow? To elaborate, empathy must be accompanied by some detachment, to maintain objectivity in evaluating issues and perspectives, and so as to see things further in different points of view, 
because as a critical thinker, I am expected to understand my own biases and be more open-minded. That way, my conclusions would be rational, unbiased, and logical. We must disengage ourselves in social conditioning, apart from arrogance and intolerance. Unfortunately, many people don't question what they hear, nor do they scrutinize the source of whatever information before echoing. We shouldn't just accept what others say, no matter how much we adore them. We have to remember that such mentality hinders us from enabling a reasonable mind and critical thinking skills, and when we fail to take down the barriers, we'll end up cutting corners and undue stress. What was shown, ultimately, served as a guide, so as not to defeat the purpose of providing objective and impartial opinion on the matter at hand. Who are we to judge anyway? We only explored the possibility of its applicability in this situation. Let's continue. Uh, actually, ngayon ginagawa ko pa rin kasi may hearing mo ako bukas, mga kabatis natin. Let me catch you there. Referring from the previous uploaded video based on Rani Randolph's live stream on October 3rd, 2023. Attorney, parang nag-iimbita ng gagawa. Eh, kaya nga, ang dami kong na-receive na death threats eh. I cannot go to court tomorrow. We have a hearing tomorrow. They know I have a hearing tomorrow. Tapos yan yung sasabihin mo. That's totally preposterous and absurd. It's very clear that there has been a misinterpretation of the bantering statement made about somebody else's behavior. Undeniably, there was never any intention to harm anybody, and there was never a death threat. The statement was merely an expression of concern about the potential consequences of somebody's extreme anger and grudge holding. Also, no name was being mentioned in the said bantering statement. Referring to the previous video I uploaded, accordingly, there is such thing as heart rupture, and that anger can cause or trigger heart attack. It is unfair that he intentionally portrayed the bantering statement as a death threat or even death wish when it was clearly not intended to be one. That's absurd. Clouds one's critical thinking skills and inability to have a reasonable mind and fair judgment. For such a lawyer, it's unfortunate how the context was easily misinterpreted. Isn't it important for people to take a step back and analyze the situation objectively before jumping to conclusions? As to his claim of receiving death threats where he blamed the senator for it, as if telling us all to withhold or should I say, refrain from exercising our right to freedom of speech according to his liking and schedule, is totally unfair and ridiculous. Again, there was never an ill intention or an ill motive as far as the bantering statement is concerned. Moreover, for such assumption that they knew about his scheduled hearing, and insinuated that the senator should have refrained from bantering. It is highly unreasonable to expect others to know someone else's schedule, especially when it comes to legal proceedings. What in the world did he really think that everybody knew about it? Is the senator his secretary? His partner? Perhaps, his parent for him to know his hearing schedules? Not at all. He was the one who eventually announced it to the public in a series of live streams on October 3, 2023, where he even dramatized as he finished what was supposed to be a motion or manifestation in which his act seemed like an appeal to emotion in order to gain sympathy. Let me reiterate that there was never an intention to harm anybody, as far as the bantering statement is concerned. Rather, it serves as a reminder of the possible consequences of harboring anger and holding a grudge without justification. Ngayon, dahil sa threats ho, na natanggap ko, dahil sa ginawa ni Rafi Tulfo na ito, eh, ang dami na hong threats na sinesend ho dun sa mobile number namin, tapos sa email din, Kaya ngayon, kailangan ko gumawa ng manifestation tsaka motion sa korte na kung pwede video conference ang, ang pag-attend ko sa, ano, sa hearing bukas kasi nga ho, dito sa nangyari na ito, mga kabats natin na ginawa ni Rafi Tulfo. Kaya pagpasensyahan nyo, may, may gagawin pa ho ako. Sandali. Sandali ha. I-finalize ko lang mga kabats natin yung ano yung bago natin panoorin yan. I-finalize ko lang yung motion na ipapile ko, ipapile ko bukas. Wait, did I hear it correctly? Earlier, while you were dramatizing and showing everybody that you were finalizing the so-called motion or manifestation to be filed the next day. I finalize ko lang yung motion na ipapile ko, ipapile ko bukas. So that the court would allow you to attend the hearing scheduled for the following day via video conferencing instead. You then said that you have already sent the copy of the text messages allegedly containing threats. Alam niyo may text message ho ako na-receive, mga text message ako na na-receive. Yung and hapon din, habang nangyayari yan mga kabatas natin, uh, well, pinadala ko rin sa korte. Ito rin mga kabatas natin. Isn't it confusing when you said that the motion or manifestation you were finalizing at that time, while you were having a live stream, would be filed the next day? 
And it was also on the next day that you were asking the court to allow you to attend the hearing via video conferencing. May I ask how you sent the alleged threats in the form of text messages? Did you just send them without any context? Does it mean that you will go to the court first in order to file, and then they will wait for you to log in if the court grants your motion, and then proceed with the hearing? Seriously? After you maliciously accuse the senator, then you dramatize the situation, for what? For personal gain? Such actions are indeed inappropriate and can be seen as a manipulative tactic to gain sympathy or support. As an all-time proud trial lawyer that you are, I just can't believe that you'll go that low. You resorted to exaggeration or misrepresentation of facts. Was it worth creating a false and malicious narrative which we all know may further complicate the situation? By portraying yourself as a victim, you were trying to evoke an emotional response from your supporters and shape their perceptions of the situation in your favor, didn't you? Referring to one of my previously uploaded videos, if my mind serves me right, your inappropriate action in an attempt to gain sympathy from your followers can be seen as a form of pathos and appeal to emotion. As one of the three primary rhetorical appeals used in persuasive speech, pathos appeals to emotions and feelings, often seeking to arouse pity, sympathy, or compassion in the listener or reader, and you were the best example. How pathetic. Shut the hell up. Provided that your accusations in relation to the death threat were true, isn't it generally recommended to report any credible threats to the authorities? If someone genuinely feels threatened or believes their safety is at risk, it is important to seek assistance from law enforcement to ensure proper investigation and protection, right? The father of your long-time live-in partner, Benjamin Magalong, was a retired police official. Your uncle, the brother of your mother, was a police official too. Tulad ng sinasabi ko sa inyo lagi, marami akong kaibigan na police. No, meron pa nga akong dito ngayon na active sa service. Si si General Bustamante po, kapatid ng nanay ko, active pa siya sa service. Alam niyo naman, pati si ano, yung yung tatay ko ni ni ano, ni Mrs. no, si Attorney Tintin, no, si Attorney Magalong, eh dati ring police. You, as an ever proud trial lawyer, of all people should know what to do firsthand. But there you were. You chose to do a series of live streams instead. According to Respicio and Company law firm as can be read in an October 14, 2023 post published in their website, they were asked about how to legally deal with receiving death threats. And here's what they have to say. The most immediate step is to report the threat to the Philippine National Police or the National Bureau of Investigation. Then secure copies of the threats, as they can serve as evidence. Basically, formal complaint often begins with the filing of a blotter report at the nearest police station. Yun, nagrabash po kami ng motion ngayon. Alam nyo may text message po ako na-receive, mga text message ako na na-receive. Yung, it happened din, habang nangyayari yan mga kabatas natin. Alright then, you started a portraying as a pitiful victim when you dramatized the whole thing as you tried so hard to evoke an emotional response from your supporters, following the malicious allegations against the senator without proper evidences. Despite the fact that the bantering statement was not intended to be a death threat, but rather a figurative expression of concern, Contrary to your explicit claim that it was indeed a death threat as also echoed by your supporters, here you are making a fool out of yourself even more in your desperation. Referring to your first video on October 3, 2023, entitled I Will Not Wish Death Even to My Worst Enemy Rafi Tolfo. Now, from the title alone, it's evident that you really are holding grudge against the senator when you referred him as your worst enemy. You can't tell us that you are just addressing the information to the senator. Because if you do, you should have put a comma after the word enemy, right? So it'd have been, I will not wish death to my worst enemy, Rafi Tulfo. There's a lot difference. You cannot tell us that you're not conscious about your grammar. Remember, you've been making fun of other people whenever their sentences unfortunately were grammatically incorrect. And that you even claimed that you used to be an English teacher, right? Also, being a meticulous that you are, there's no room for any mistakes. Eratom on the part of uh, Sir Erwin Tulfo. Sa tingin ko, uh, nagkamali lang siya sa pagbanggit niya. Siyempre, metikuloso tayo kasi critical thinkers tayo, di ba? Pero patatawarin natin siya doon. Oh my goodness! Oh. For emphasis, and also to reiterate, you could have finished the so-called motion before going live if you're really in a rush. For somebody who's truly very worried and having security concerns, because as you claimed, you're being threatened, so every moment counts, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to waste a single second doing something else, right? But I can see that your action says otherwise. You didn't seem to be really bothered at all. Uh, well, pinadala ko rin sa korte. Ito rin, mga kabats natin. 
Eh, tignan nyo mga kabatos natin yung sinabi niya dito. Grabe. And, and because of what he said here, mga kabatos natin, eh, yes, dali, ilapas ko yung ano, ilapas ko yung mga messages sa akin. Alam nyo ito yung mga sinabi sa akin, may mga nag- Ikaw ang sinungaling sabi. Ikaw, ikaw ang may kalalagyan, malapit ka na. Tapos yung mga sinasabi nila, mga kabatas natin, na ano, ikaw ang kawawa, malapit na ni Dagol sa kaniperyo. Ganun, ganun sila. In addition to the previous comment, so you were blaming the senator that because of what he said referring to the bantering statement which you threw shades upon, you claimed to have received death threats being sent to your published mobile number and via email. May we know, aside from sending it to the court along with the motion, did you report it to the proper authorities? We have to remember, all SIM cards now were registered, so it'd be very easy to trace. I must say, that's one hell of a tough right there. The guts to do that to you was admirable knowing you're a lawyer with a retired general uncle and a retired general father of your live-in partner. That was so brave of whoever that was. And oh by the way, was it just me or you intentionally didn't show any despite you saying Because I didn't see any copy of those text messages allegedly containing death threats being shown in your screen. What's more, it doesn't sound like a death threat to me. Since you were very certain that those text messages you received were death threats as you claimed, I must assume that you've reported it to the proper authorities. Okay, yeah. Mga kabatas natin, yung taob na salita, ginagamit yan pa sa mga taong sobra yung sama ng loob. Yung taob na salita, mga kabatas natin, yan yung, yun yung sinasabi sa mga movies. Kung meron silang gustong patahimikin at may mga hired gunman, Sinasabi nila, itaub mo yan. I understand that it can be crucial for lawyers to approach such situation with fairness, objectivity, and reliance on credible evidence. And it's very frustrating to witness a lawyer making biased interpretations and accusations based on generic movie films. How low can you go? While movies and other forms of entertainment, both your YouTube channels included, where you mislead people and made them believe that your goal is to teach or educate about the law, can occasionally provide insights or inspiration. Given your more than a decade in law practice, you of all people should know that relying on fictional portrayals from such movies doesn't accurately reflect the complexities of real-world situations and could undermine the credibility of your arguments. Isn't it important to prioritize well-established legal principles and sound legal reasoning? But before we proceed, let's be reminded that you maliciously accused the senator. You made him look like a murderer. When you announced publicly that he wanted to have you killed, referring to the bantering statement made. What in the hell heck are we talking about here? Mga kabatas natin, yung taob na salita, ginagamit yan pa sa mga taong sobra yung sama ng loob. Yung taob na salita, mga kabatas natin, yan yung, yun yung sinasabi sa mga movies. Kung meron silang gustong patahimikin at may mga hired gunman, sinasabi nila itaob mo yan. I was like, come on, seriously? You were insinuating that the senator have grudge or something against you. I hope that you have legal basis to present. Kindly review the title of your video. You referred to the senator as your worst enemy. Do you think it's safe to say that you're even more likely to have a stronger motive to harm him? Let's put it this way. In a hypothetical situation where you refer to the senator as your worst enemy, despite him having done nothing wrong to you, don't you think there's a greater possibility that you may have a motive or intention to cause harm towards the senator? You have been continuously attacking him, but has he ever retaliated? Never. Yet, you persist. Shouldn't we, or rather the senator, be concerned about the potential underlying issues and the likelihood of aggression occurring? Can't you see where your personal grudge and interests have brought you? Aren't you supposed to hold yourself to higher standards? Are you really willing to discard years of formal education and a decade of field practice, where only facts matter? Honestly, it took me some time to finalize this because I've been trying to put myself in your shoes, to better understand where you're coming from. I wanted to believe that you're not one of those attorneys who deliberately engage in wrongful acts for personal gain or that of their client. For what it's worth, nobody is actually safe from ethical blind spots, slippery slopes, and ethical fading that can lead good people to behave badly. I find some comfort in the idea that there may not be as many inherently bad people or lawyers in the world as we might believe. 
However, this understanding raises even more concerns. It implies that nobody is exempt from the danger of behaving unethically when the right or wrong circumstances present themselves. Moreover, having your personal or emotional biases affect your professional judgment, you constantly fail to exercise the use of critical thinking skills, provided it exists within you. Isn't it incumbent for lawyers to approach whatever situation in an objective and impartial manner, focusing on the facts and evidence at hand rather than personal feelings or grudges against individuals? And the way I see it, as you engage to such behavior, that indicates unprofessional conduct or even ethical violations. Honestly, I can hardly address you as attorney because you doesn't act like a truly respectable one. Moving forward. According to your perspective, people who hold grudges or sama ng loob against someone might use the word loob as an instruction when hiring a killer or gunman to kill or harm them, similar to what is depicted in movies. They supposedly order a hitman by using the word loob while giving you the benefit of the doubt. I am not inclined to think negatively about you. You may have a legal basis for your claim, and perhaps, just maybe, I can find at least one movie to support your assertion. I will make my best effort to find the movies you referred to, where the word oh. technically signifies killing, as you insinuated, and is commonly used as an order to have someone killed, and that would serve as your evidence that the senator wanted you dead, should I find one. After days of searching, here's what I've found. <laughs> Bibigyan ko pa kayo ng pagkakataon. Ano? Kami pa, bibigyan mo ng pagkakataon? Uh, Pepe, nasa bakura ka namin. Gusto mo itumpa ka namin ngayon? Umalis na muna kayo. isang tauro na nagyayabang na siya raw nagpatumba kay Bosing Ador. Kasangga mo ba siya, pare? Hindi. Pero pwede kong balasahin kung gusto mo. Kung itutumba, ako na papapel. Salamat, pa. Oh! Dahil bago ako maglilis ng pakuran ng iba, pakuran ko muna ng lilinisin ko. Sige! Itumba mo na ako ngayon! Ano pa hinihintay mo? Ang tagal naman! Ano? Ha? Ha? Tagali! Sali ka naman magtumba ng tao eh! Ano? Ha? Salot sa lipunan, tulutong ba ko? Ganyan na rin tingin ko sa'yo. Huwag ka na. Tata, ito na ulit. Nangangako ako, tata. Talagang hindi ka na makakaw. Dahil ikaw ang unang itutong ba ko dito sa bulakan. Tata! Alam mo, may mga tao tayong pinuposte ang lahat ng kilos niya. Gusto mo itumba na namin eh. Huwag niyong gagalawin si Galvez. Ako maniningil sa kanya. Mahirap ka laban ng taong nagpapakamatay na. Itutumba natin siya bago niya tayo maidamay. Tawagan mo ako dito kapag natumba mo na siya. Medyo na late kami. Pero okay na. Good work. Ngayon, itumba niyo na yung dalawa. Yung dalawa? Oh, sigurado ka? Oo. Oh. Sa ibang araw na lang natin tumba. Sige. Ihiwalayin ko na ng kaluluwa mo. Aminin mo rin ikaw nagpatumba kay Bondat. At aminin mo rin na dinukot mo at rinipang kapatid ko. Please accept my apologies if I couldn't discern the specific movie you were referring to when you repeatedly mentioned the word oh. being commonly used in films to depict someone ordering the killing of another individual they hold a grudge against. However, I would like to offer you another opportunity. Perhaps you may have confused a movie with news clips. 
To clarify, I conducted a search, and here is what I have found thus far. Matapos na bigla na lang itinumba ang isang lalaking. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Maguire, meron daw siyang informasyon na gusto rin daw siya ipatumba ng ilang drug lord. Isa na namang mayor itinumba. Isa na namang alagad ng media ang itinumba. Pagawad ng barangay sa Quezon, itinumba. Isa lalaki ang itinumba sa dinaluhang... Isang kakilala niya ang itinumba sa Malabon. Itinumba ng riding in tandem ang isang barangay chairman sa... Doon na pala itinumba ang kapitan ng naturang barangay. Ang isang lalaking sangkot o mano sa kasong droga at pagnanakaw ang itinumba. Pareho po yan na... Itinumba ng mga di patukoy na salarin ang isang... Katapat ng Hall of Justice, itinumba ang isang abogado. Walang habas na itinumba ng riding in tandem. Samantala, itinumba naman ng riding in tandem. Sa spot ang isang security guard na itinumba sa parking lot ang isang, isang kakilala niya ang itinumba sa Malabon. Igaw ang itinumba ang executive ng isang media... Sa Malabon, barangay kagawad naman ang itinumba malapit sa kanyang bahay. Samantala, itinumba naman ng riding in tandem. Itinumba ng riding in tandem ang isang... Despite my extensive search, I have been unable to find any movie, nor news clips or articles that use the word Toby to signify someone being ordered to be killed. In fact, the common expression used for this purpose is Tumba, not Toby. Given this information, I am uncertain which movie you watched where the word Toby was used to instruct someone to kill another person. Mr. Libayan, isn't that lawyers are expected to present strong and well-substantiated legal arguments based on credible sources of law and evidence? While movies may sometimes depict legal scenarios, it is generally not considered proper or ethical for lawyers to solely rely on fictional portrayals as the primary foundation for their arguments in a serious legal case. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Shouldn't legal arguments must be grounded in real-life legal principles, statutes, regulations, case precedents, and reliable documentation? I always believe that it is important for lawyers, just as proud as you Mr. Libayan, to gather evidence and construct arguments based on factual information and professional expertise. And that, relying on movies as a basis for your argument may undermine the credibility and integrity of such case, leading to potential weaknesses in your argumentation, right? Lawyers are duty-bound to provide competent and diligent representation, and that typically involves thorough research and utilization of credible legal resources. Have you ever thought that those legal professionals, yourself included, who base their arguments primarily on depictions from movies could face scrutiny not just from ordinary people, but rather from opposing counsel, judges, or even disciplinary authorities? I hate to say this, but I'd still say it anyway. <laughs> you stupid bastard! If becoming a lawyer would require me to possess the same level of thinking as you, Mr. Libayan, I would prefer to fool around, engage in leisure activities, and enjoy myself instead of dedicating all my valuable time to arduous study in law school. Would you kindly do us all a favor and disclose the movies to which you were referring? I still want to believe that this confusion was not deliberate and intended to conceal your shortcomings. Regarding the question raised in my previous video, could it be that your rallying cry of championing the children was merely a facade? We hope our speculations are unfounded, but your actions may lead us to suspect that you fabricated stories involving a mysterious congressman or congresswoman, or whoever that was, to evade defeat in the debate, and to save your ass. If you've watched the video up to this point, commend yourself for your commitment to uncovering the truth behind our movie-based death threat series. I look forward to our next encounter, which will feature an exclusive interview with a highly anticipated surprise guest like nobody has ever done before. In the meantime, as previously advised, maintain an open-minded approach. Oh, and before I conclude, a friend of mine has a message for you, Mr. Libayan. Saan ka ba nakatira dito? Oo, bakit? Gusto mo 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 yan ang 45? Ha?